Hey there, it's Brittany Chavers. I'm back with Dressed Up Buttons and Jesse James Beads today, and we're gonna make a really cute set of necklaces. We're gonna make two. Um, I am using the Cinderella buttons. This pack, we get, we get a little Cinderella, cute little button. We get two of her little mouse friends. I know this one's Gus, and I don't remember this one's name, unfortunately. And then we also get the fairy godmother. And you can see I've already attached a jump ring to the top of this fairy godmother. Today we're not gonna be using the little mice. They're so cute, I wanna use them in a future project though. Um, but we're also going to connect a jump ring to our Cinderella. So I'm just using E6000 and a regular jump ring, putting a dot at the top of her head. And it's totally up to you whether you want to keep or remove the shanks on these buttons. It will lay better if you cut the shank off. And I'm going to, I'm going to do that and I'll show you what I do and how I do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my pliers and push that jump ring into the glue. And where the split is in the jump ring is where I'm putting uh, into the glue. I'm just pulling it up a little bit more than that. I usually have an, a head pin or an eye pin to help me move my glue around. And I just wanna bring that around the edges of my jump ring. And then we wanna look at the front to make sure it's centered, and it is. Super cute. So to remove the shank, you can use scissors, you can use fingernail clippers, but I'm just gonna use my nippers. Um, on both of these, you can see that the shank is a different color than the back of the button. That means that is holding um, one or more layers together. So what we wanna do here is glue these layers together because if you don't, they can potentially come apart. Those blue knobs are helping them stay in place. Um, but over time, it can work itself loose. And all I'm going to do is just put a very minuscule amount of glue and kind of just rub it in there. That E6000 will bond to the layers that are up um, through there and uh, that'll become permanently bonded. I'm just gonna do that again on this one. And it doesn't look like a lot of glue, but this stuff is strong. So you want this to cure for at least 20 minutes to an hour before you start working with it. I like letting it cure for 24 hours. My pendants have been drying for a while and it's time to make our necklace. So today I'm not just going to use bead stringing wire like we typically would for making a necklace. I am obsessed with this itty bitty chain from Jesse James Beads and I think it would be a really fun thing to make some beaded necklaces using it. So so we're gonna make two different necklaces and the great thing about the itty bitty chain or the bitty chain is you get a yard so you can you can make two or three out of one piece I'm gonna be using two packs today um, with Cinderella I'm going to be using some of crystal cave it's um, a color trends mix from Jesse James beads and with fairy godmother and maybe Cinderella we're also going to be using unicorn bliss um, I have some backup beads because I just think she's she's gonna need more blue. We have these um, check glass pearl matte beads from Jesse James Beads in Aqua. And then I have some other beads hanging out just in case. We've got some uh, check fire polish AB crystal and some thunder polish beads. And we even have some rose beads. Aren't these fantastic? And, and this one matches uh, Fairy Godmother pretty perfectly. So we're gonna get started. I'm going to start with um, Miss Cinderella. For Cinderella, I'm gonna use these large opalite looking uh, crystals. And I like these crackle crystals too, or crackle glass beads. And I'm gonna use some of the aqua pearls because they match her dress so well. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure. We have to make sure that the chain will fit through each bead. So I'm gonna grab a piece of wire. This 20 gauge wire, so it's gonna help me clear um, the pearl if there is any coating 
again uh, in front of the hole I just want I don't know that these this itty bitty chain will fit through these pearls if not no worries at all we have other beads that'll work Even though this chain is very tiny, it's still too large to fit through these blue beads. So you, that's what you'll have to improvise when you run up against issues like that. The good thing is the chain does fit through these um, Thunder Polish Crystal Cubes. And I really love how that color looks. And we can get some more sparkle into the necklace, which is always fantastic. I'm going to pour out Unicorn Bliss and see which beads in here. Oh, we have these wonderful little rondelles that are uh, baby blue. We have some um, Aurora Borealis crystal rondelles. Those are going to look great in here. I am going to put in some of these crystal rondelle spacers to get some. I mean, this is it's just Cinderella. She's got to have some glass, right? She's got to have some bling. And then at the end, I'll have two more of these little baby blue crystal rondelles. All right, so we have our um, really pretty, sparkly, glassy looking um, pattern. And then all I'm going to do is string our beads through um, on our chain. So I'm just going to start with this blue one and work my way down to Cinderella. I'll need to put a jump ring on Cinderella. And then okay. I'll finish stringing. All right, we have our first necklace strung. I am going to um, design and string the second necklace before we um, finish it off and I show you how to do um, the closure on it. So I have Miss Fairy Godmother and then I have these wonderful rose beads. Jesse James Beads has these in a bunch of different colors too. So, um, <laughs> just so cute. And then I am going to use these coins. I guess I want a, a chunkier, um, a totally different feel, even though we're using some of the same supplies even the same bead mix. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my second pack and string this. Then we'll finish up our necklace using the end pieces and some a clasp.
All right, our second necklace is strung. So what we'll do is grab the end pieces out of the um, chain kit. Aren't those adorable? If you are a Disney maniac, you're gonna love this necklace. Or if you have um, Disney fans in your family or friends. All right, so I'm gonna pull out four of these because I need one for each end of each necklace. Okay. And you wanna decide how long your necklace is. Now, if you decide and you cut it too short, that's okay because these have loops on the end. You can string some more beads using bead stringing wire. You can wire wrap some beads on. You can do a whole lot of stuff um, if you decide that mm, maybe I didn't cut this the right length. So I'm just gonna snip this one here. Very easy to cut. You have some left over for a bracelet or earrings or another necklace. Okay, I like to use my pliers to hold on to one end of the end finding. And then I go ahead and put the end of our chain inside of the cup. Okay. And then I hold that with my thumb, my thumb and forefinger, and then use my pliers to squish it closed. So you want to capture that end of that bead, uh, beaded chain right in there. And that's not going anywhere once you get that closed. I'm gonna do that three more times. All right, I finished that. I have some 22 gauge jump, um, 22 gauge wire, and I'm gonna make my own jump rings because the holes for these ending findings are pretty small. What we'll do is take our round nose pliers and the length of our 20, 22 gauge wire. You can use 24, but that might be a little flimsy. And I am just gonna hold it between my pliers and start wrapping it around. So the diameter of your jump ring is going to be wherever you're wrapping it on your pliers. So if you want a larger one, try back here on the mandrel, smaller up here on the mandrel. I'm going for a medium. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'm going to take my snippers or my nippers and just cut up this one side of my barrel or my coil. Until they're all disconnected. And we have a fast and easy way to make a jump ring. And to finish it off, I have two um, lobster clasps. I'm going to put one end on the clasp and one end on a larger jump ring that we'll clasp onto. And here we go. Here is necklace number one with Miss Cinderella, who is super sparkly and it looks like she's got her glass slippers on. Cute. And then we have Miss Fairy Godmother. some beautiful floral beads and a lot of bling. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Dress It Up and Jesse James Beats for having me back and have a good day. Bye-bye.